Today's video is going to be super behind the scenes of the cosmetic industry. There's a lot that people don't talk about. So I wanted to share with you seven things that the makeup industry doesn't want you to know. Now, before I get into these seven things, if you're new to my channel, my name is Marlena. I've been a cosmetic brand owner since 2010. I had the brand Makeup Geek Cosmetics. I'm working on a new brand for the future. During that time, I've worked very closely with chemists, product developers, everyone in that industry space. I've personally set foot in and worked with 15 labs that are the most well known throughout the world. I don't say any of that from a cocky place you all at all. I'm so blessed and grateful to have gotten to do all of that. I say that because it's not me speaking from just a quick little Google search online. I've actually lived through this for many many years working in product development with these cosmetic manufacturers. So let's jump right in and start with the first thing that the makeup industry doesn't want you to know. makeup industry doesn't want you to know is that high-end and drugstore products are made at the exact same manufacturers. Now the argument I always get when I talk about this online as well, it could be the different formulas, this and that. Absolutely, there can be different formulas at a lab, but if that lab or manufacturer has various formulas, it's not going to be this vast price difference between the two to warrant the price difference between high-end and drugstore. When you are buying a makeup product, most of the time you're paying for the name, the reputation, of that brand and the packaging. You're not actually paying for the product itself. The product is the cheapest thing to actually make in all of this. Packaging for sure always costs more than the product itself, which is so crazy. What actually dictates price more than the formula itself is where it's made. If I make a foundation in Italy versus a foundation made in China, I'm gonna see two very different price points. Now that's not bashing either one. A lot of that comes from the price of labor, the raw materials that are used, but from one specific manufacturer, let's say it's Italy and I make a, a foundation in Italy, if they give me a few different formulas, there may be a slight variation in price, but it's not going to be double and triple of one formula versus the other coming from that same manufacturer. Number two kind of goes along with this. Most of the time when you're buying a product, you are paying for just the name itself. So for example, eyeliner pencils, and I have some options to show you guys. So I have Ulta Beauty, I have an Urban Decay one, I have L'Oreal, I have a Makeup Geek one that I used to work on, a Sephora one. There's a ton of different eyeliner pencils. These are all made at the same manufacturer. The the formulas, there's a few variations of the formula, but if you look at the ingredient decks, you're gonna see a lot of the same ingredients used across the board. And at the end of the day, it's the same packaging. It's a pencil, it has a cap. There's really not a lot that goes into the packaging. So this is one category for sure that you are paying for just the name and not the product itself. And we'll do another video later, you guys, where I will tell you how to shop like a pro, where to save your money and where to spend it based on what you are actually paying for on the product. Number three, blushes is one of the products that has actually a really large profit margin. So blush is basically an eyeshadow, you guys. I know it's gonna have different things in the formula that are gonna be more for the skin. It may have less pigmentation, but if you look at the ingredient deck of an eyeshadow and a blush, it's gonna be very comparable. It's gonna have talc, mica, it's gonna have some binders in there. So when you see the price of an eyeshadow, maybe it's a few dollars, you go to blush, you're like, oh, it's $40. You know, you're paying for the packaging, but outside of that, that product itself is really not expensive to make. So I would say in this category would be one, if you can find a color and drugstore that works for you, great. You don't have to spend a lot of money on this product because it's not really, I'm gonna use this just kind of loosely like a fancy formula that requires a lot of development and things like that. It's a pretty easy thing to make blushes. So if you wanna save money, that would be a category I'd say go to drugstore. Number four I talked on a little bit too is eyeliners are almost all made at the exact same place and are very similar formula. So when you look at a drugstore eyeliner, the last time I checked they were eight or nine dollars. I'm seeing high-end ones are like $21, $22 for the exact same pencil. This is definitely one category, you all, that I would say if you're just looking for a basic color, a black or a brown, get a drugstore version. It's made at the same place. It's probably a very, very similar formula. It's going to apply the same way. You're really just paying for the name or an option of colors. That's it. Number five I touched on too is that when you buy a makeup product, you are mostly paying for the packaging. So if you are a person where packaging maybe doesn't matter to you, as much, but you want a really high quality product, I would actually say go for some pro brands like Kryolan, Mayron, Ben Nye. Just type into your Google search professional makeup artist brands. Those brands spend most of their money on formula, the product itself. The packaging is not going to be fancy. It's not going to be super decorative. It's going to be a basic clear lid type thing, which is meant to be for pros because they don't care about the packaging. They're needing a heavy duty, high quality product that's going to work on a bunch of different clients. 
clients. So if you really just want great products that aren't gonna break your budget, I would say go for pro brands. You're just gonna get more bang for your buck from that actual product. Now, if you're a person that loves packaging, I am one of those included. Obviously, the higher end brands are able to do that well. They have a wider profit margin that they can spend a bit more and do really fancy packaging. Like when I think of that, I come to mind of Pat McGrath. Like her products for me are pretty good. What you're mostly paying for is that beautiful packaging, the cases, the gorgeous box it comes in. All of that comes at a price because that is expensive to produce, especially if it's something custom like what she does. So that's what you're actually paying for is the product, not necessarily the, the makeup inside. So you could have a super luxe high-end brand that has this really beautiful luxurious packaging and you try the product inside and it's like dusty, it's chalky, it's not very pigmented. Have you guys experienced that? I know I have and I get so mad. I'm like, I spent $60 on this eyeshadow quad and it doesn't even work. And then after I got into what I do and worked on the backside of things with product development, I'm like, oh, I'm paying for that name and that really nice compact but not necessarily the product. Number six is a very taboo and a borderline scandalous thing to talk about, but I'm gonna say it anyways, because you guys know me, I'm blunt. When your favorite brands go to retail stores versus being independent in any brand, the quality is almost guaranteed to always go down. Now here's why. When an independent brand, when they start selling you know, direct to consumer, they just have their online portal, they're not in any brick and mortar stores, they're able to give you a better quality makeup for that price point because they don't have to worry about paying another kind of middle person that needs to be profitable as well. So when I had Makeup Geek, it was selling direct to consumer. That profit margin, I was able to bring high quality to the table for affordable price. But as soon as I started getting into retail stores, I lost my shirt on it basically because I had to have a wide enough margin to be able to support that retailer as well. And it's not like the retailer's ripping you off. They have to make money as well. So there has to be such a wide profit margin that the brand itself is able to make money to pay their team, pay their you know overhead and all of that. But then that retailer, they have staff, they have utilities, they have insurance, they have loss and damages, all these things that it takes to run that business. They have to pay for that as well. So you're basically supporting two different businesses in one when you buy from a major retailer versus buying directly from the brand itself. So what happens because their margins are not able to handle the extra expense of being in store, they're going to either have to raise the prices or they're going to have to cut the quality of the makeup. And most times consumers don't like when you raise the prices, obviously. So they're going to cut the quality to try to get that cost down to make sure that that margin is wide enough to be in store. With all that being said, if you guys love a specific product and it's an independent brand, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I wish it was in store. Yes, the accessibility is amazing and that's definitely a bonus, but it comes at a price usually in that the quality is going to go down. Now, the last one I have is also one that a lot of people don't want to talk about. It's very controversial. Again, don't shoot the messenger, but this is the actual reality of of behind the scenes. Talc is still a risk for having slight traces of asbestos in your makeup. And I felt like I've been talking about this, you all, since 2008, even before I started my own brand. That's why I had my products for talc free. It is such a common ingredient in cosmetics. Now I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm not trying to say that anything has talc is gonna make you sick, not at all. Let me explain. Talc, when it is mined, if it's not done properly, it can have traces of asbestos in it. It's just part of the natural mineral that's in the earth and how it's mined and all that, it's one of those things that it's just, if it's not done carefully and inspected and done really well, it can have traces of that in there. So I don't know if you guys have seen over the last several years, I think it was Claire's makeup and some other brands where they had this really, really inexpensive eyeshadows and it got recalled because it had asbestos in it. The reason for that is because they used a low quality talc that was super cheap. So for me personally, my brand, I just avoided talc altogether because I didn't want to risk it. Again, I'm not fear mongering and I'm not saying that anything has talc is dangerous. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is if you have products that are very, very inexpensive and they have talc in it, I would be very weary about using that because if it's too good to be true, then it is. So when it comes to makeup, if it's super, super cheap and you're like, oh, why? how is this so cheap? That is why. is because they're using low quality ingredients in there. It's probably made in a manufacturer that's not very clean, who just doesn't care and all of that. So for me, I've gotten to the point in my life where I'll buy fewer makeup products, but I'll buy a little bit more quality because I know it's made well. It's at a clean environment. 
environment and all of that. I know everyone, especially nowadays, is on a budget. I would say still for me personally, is focus on brands that you know are going to be ethically made, are gonna vouch for the, the safety of their products. Like when I think of a budget brand in mind that I highly recommend, I would say ColourPop. Made in the US, I know I've been to their manufacturer on more than one occasion. It's super clean. Everything is done on the up and up there. So for me personally, if I had to recommend an inexpensive brand to go to, it'd be ColourPop. So let's go back to the talc really quick. I have Dr. Eric Berg. He's on YouTube. He has millions of subscribers. He's a legit doctor. He talked about this in a video. I was like, yes, finally someone has talked about it. It's not just me. The video is called Five Women's Products That You Should Stop Using Immediately. And he talks about this too. And I, I thought the information that he shared was pretty spot on. So I'll put that clip here just so you guys can see that. Now, talc is the softest mineral and it's highly absorbable. So it'll absorb the oil from your skin and give you an appearance of kind of a soft, silky, texture. Now, some of you are probably asking, well, why do brands even use talc? The reason is it has a very soft, buttery texture to it. So when you feel an eyeshadow or a blush and it's very soft and buttery, most likely it's going to have talc in it. Mica is another mineral that is used in products. Sometimes you'll see a combination of talc and mica, sometimes just mica, sometimes just talc. Comparing the two, a lot of brands prefer to use talc because it is softer around the edges. It's mica can be just a little bit more gritty, not a ton but if you have a good chemist that is very great with formulation, they can find a way to make that mica super smooth. That's what I had with my shadows and they were super soft and buttery and they were talc free. It is possible. It's just a matter of, you know, asking the chemist to create that for you. So we'll see what happens in the future with this. If companies will still keep using talc, if they'll care or whatever, it's just something to kind of put on your radar to look out for when you're buying your powder ingredients. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that information. Let me know if you like more kind of behind the scenes info like that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. Come back next week for some more videos. Have a great week, you guys, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.